What's happening, man? Shit. How's that snow treat? Oh, wonderful. I'm, I'm having a fucking <laughs> home made of Swiss cheese. <laughs> It's, it's just you sound crazy. like you got some fucking congestion, some congestion going on. Yeah, man. yeah. Sick? I'm a, I'm a fucking hair bit sick, and I'm sick of snow. I mean, it got me off of work today, but it, all it does is have me running right. around with pots and pans trying to catch the next leak. It's ridiculous. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, um, let's talk about before we get talking about the Super Bowl. Um, we got to talk about what everybody in the whole fucking country, anybody that follows football, is talking about. And that, that was Richard Sherman, the whole Richard Sherman <laughs> saga. Uh, um, obviously, everybody who's watching the show knows what happened after the, you know, the Seahawks defeated <clears throat> the 49ers. Aaron Andrews interviewed, I don't know if you want to call it an interview. I don't know if she even needs it. Does she need a hearing aid now? I don't know. Well, she came out, she came out today and she said it was great. It was wonderful. I'm like, well, what else are you supposed to say? You supposed to look right, like the right. scared white woman that you obviously were <laughs> when that happened. <laughs> well, right, well right. who who was talking about you? Come on, dummy. Right. This is this is why you yeah. no longer work at ESPN. Right. It's Dumbass. it's it's it was you know, and it's there's all there's two sides to everything. Like I mean, you know, we we've discussed it a little bit before the cameras came on, and it's like you know what they're gonna be. People that were fans of it, believe me, he had mad Twitter followers after this shit. He people up loved it. Some people hundred and fifty thousand. Huh? Is that how many he got? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, people. Fuck. Some people loved it. You, it depends who you are, what kind of person you. Are. Some people obviously, you know, resorted to saying, you know, you monkey, all kinds of shit. People just, and it's funny. And for those people out there, you know, you, you know, when 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 you you're that hyped up and someone slams a microphone in your face and everybody's came up to you and pumped you up and you're just at the, it's easy to make that 15 second mistake. It is, it is. And I think at one point or another, we've all probably been there and you're like, damn. And I'm sure Richard Sherman probably says, you know what? Uh, as much as he'll deny, he'll probably, he's probably saying, sure. Yeah. I went a little overboard, but when you're hyped the fuck up, you just start fucking saying shit. And then, you know, a couple hours later, <laughs> You're like, oh shit! I went fucking ape shit. Yeah, but you know? even but if you but, look at it at that standpoint, even a couple hours later, he wasn't his his attitude and his tone and the way he was delivering mm -hmm. it might have been different, but the message was still the same. He was he was yeah, well, he, he was giving an interview after the game and fully dressed up after showering, letting everyone know that mm -hmm. Michael Crabtree was a mediocre receiver. Oh, right. Dex! He doesn't. Uh, he hello. Yeah, no, that's me dropping my iPad. Well, Oh, uh, the, um, yeah, he's, I don't know what the history is, is with him and Michael well, Crabtree. I don't know. Supposedly, it's, it's a, during a, mm -hmm. um, a, uh, a thing for the NFL where they do like a community service type pickup type game where they mm -hmm. get a bunch of athletes together and send them somewhere and they play in the community. Him and, him and Richard Sherman did just did not get along during that as well. And he, uh, Sherman walked up to Crabtree after the game and, Tried to shake his hand and say good game, and he got snuffed off then too. So, my th my thing right. is is the media, in my opinion, is it just shows you how pussified of a country we've become, where the actions of somebody like Richard Sherman have become front page news story and uh, racial slurs. Like, and in this is the thing I was saving to ask for you: How would this country right now today deal with Muhammad Ali in his prime? Oh, they couldn't deal with it. Exactly. Dude. I mean, because, yeah, because it's, it's you know, Muhammad Ali was, was a shit crazy. talking motherfucker. He was a shit talking motherfucker. And you see it with some of the MMA athletes when we report on that. And that's not really in the mainstream yet. And that is why it's not in the mainstream. Because if those athletes, if you saw the Chael Sonnens and those people talking like that, and everybody was getting a hold of that, that it would be crazy. But. You're right. You're right. I mean, Ali, he, he was, he was nuts. And, and this is a thing. This is one of the things we talk about. The way Richard Sherman reacted. I mean, everybody, some people are going to like it. Some people are going to dislike it. Some people are going to say he went overboard. You know, when it first happened, I was like, Oh shit. Fucking bust a rhymes. Rah, rah, like a dungeon drag. <laughs> he was, he was like, he was, you know, he looked like bust a rhymes going and fucking off in one of his videos. I mean, he just, yeah. they, they didn't throw at the guy all game long. They make the one right. throw at him. He did Defense, mm -hmm. He defends the play perfectly, and he bats the ball mm -hmm. back, and his guy gets a pick. And then the other yeah. thing, the other thing they always go back to is they you go back to this interview where Skip Bayless keeps guard you better than Darrell Revis. Darrell Revis has been in the league six years now, mind you, he missed one, so he missed one with an ACL. And he's, 
Right. Now, how many he's, interceptions yeah, does Dar- Darrell Rivas have in six years in the NFL? I have no idea. 21. Richard Sherman right. has been in the league three years. How many interceptions does Richard mm-hmm. Sherman have? I don't know. I think he had like eight this year, didn't he? 20. Yeah. He has 20 yeah. picks in three years. Like, seriously, if he's yeah. not the best corner. But here's the thing that's amazing me to me. Cornerbacks are almost beginning, becoming interchangeable just like running backs. Like, Richard Sherman yeah, was are. picked up in, what, the fifth round? Yeah, he was. I mean, it, you know, and it's it's how they develop once they get, you know, and one of the things about Pete Carroll is Pete Carroll was a defensive back when he played. I don't know if a lot of you people realize that. And so that is that was his position. He played when he played football. So and he is he is definitely going to be in tune. And you see how that defensive backfield for the Seattle Seahawks, now, how everybody's good. And, can you imagine the shit talk that Carroll heard when he was a white DB lining up on a black receiver? Oh yeah! Oh my oh, yeah. lord! It was to me. It's no different right. than looking at Jason Seahorn. Yeah, and you and that's and I think that's the thing, man. You you look at it. It's like Pete Carroll. You know, he doesn't shut that shit down. No, he's like whatever. He doesn't shut. A lot of coaches like Bill Cow or something like that be like, if you act like that again, you need to calm down. Like you're reflecting oh, our whole him. team, they'll, our they'll, program. They'll, they'll take huh? it a step further. A guy like that, a guy like that on the Steelers wouldn't be there long. James James Harrison no. eventually wore out his welcome by. Yeah, they so it 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 tells you that Pete Carroll's willing to co-sign to. It's like, hey, fuck it, whatever. He's he's that kind. You know, because Pete Carroll kind of has run the score up a couple times. He's he doesn't give a fuck because he's, he's running because really he's running a frat house. That's why. <laughs> right, he his, really his, does. Bet, and as long as I, they're producing, I, I, I bet his locker room and practice facility looks and smells and acts just like a fucking frat house, dude. I bet they are just yeah. crazy, loud music, just acting completely nuts. And just like you said, as long yeah. as they're performing and winning games, now what happens He's next year? If for some reason, they go eight and eight. Well, you know, next year could be a, a big issue for him because a lot of those guys are <laughs> under those rookie, uh, those rookie, um. Uh, uh, Salaries, you know what yeah. I mean. Some, when does that fall off? And, and you know, you've got a lot of people that are going to want money on the Seattle Seahawks. Like, well, you know, right now, you you think, okay, what are you going to pay someone like Richard Sherman? And I could be wrong, maybe, they, but I think he's up to be. You know, you got a lot of these guys that are going to be like, okay, I want some cheese. Oh. I'm in the NFL and I'm, I'm performing and I want some money. You oh, know, especially. Can you imagine if they get a ring? If Seattle wins this, and now you've, you're mm-hmm. done with your rookie contract, short of Russell Wilson, I think Russell Wilson would stay and see. He seems like the type of guy who would stay in one spot forever. But somebody right. like Richard Sherman, I mean, I'm not knocking him. He's and, and the thing that kills me is everyone wants to challenge this man's intellect. He graduated from Stanford. Right. Like, he, he, he finished. Right. He got a degree. He is not dumb by any stretch of the means. Like, if you listen to him in his no. other interviews, he's a very intelligent, well-thought-out, well-put-together, well-spoken oh. man. And it's just it's oh, funny that people call this man every racist name in the book yeah well and that's the thing real quick before you go on george you know richard sherman is very a very educated man very articulate and stuff like this and he went on and pled his case and and when i heard that interview he made a good point kind of like he dissected skip bayless you know he he's going to tell you he's the best he's got confidence and he's like he's not afraid to tell everybody but for when when people the people who reacted to richard sherman reacting just as fast by posting shit like you fucking black monkey on tw- on Twitter and stuff like this. That you're no better than you're 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 no different than the man you're fucking you're calling out. You know you're no different than Richard Sherman. I say you're reacting under you see him do something and you really you react the exact same way. Bam and put out some stupid say some stupid shit. You know what I mean? That's that's racist. You know he's saying shit and it, it, believe it or not that is true. <laughs> you know I mean I mean I you know I'm 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 not a Seahawk fan but. I'm going to tell you what, Richard Sherman is the best corner in the game right now. I mean, he, that's what he's saying. Should you have thrown at me? Fuck no, you shouldn't have thrown at me. Is Michael Crabtree a mediocre receiver? He's got great hands. He can snag shit out of the, 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 the air, but I don't think he's built up to be what everybody thought he was when he came out of college. So, I mean, the things he's saying are true. There, it's, there's no denying that. The guy's got some very valid points. But when you come out there and you react by posting the shit that some of these people are posting on Twitter and making a racial thing, then, then, you, then you're just fucking wild. Man. Right, it doesn't you know? make any sense. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Now on to the anyway, Super Bowl matchup. The Super Bowl. So that brings us to Super Bowl Forty Eight, which is going to be. And I, I'm going to tell you what, it's going to be interesting, George, and it's going to be interesting for a lot of reasons. Obviously, we're going to have the Seattle Seahawks against the Denver Broncos. I think the last time I checked, Denver was the favorite by one, and that doesn't surprise me. And, and the reason I say that is because the uh, I, I like Russell Wilson. I like him a lot, but right, I'd say mm-hmm. his. 
his his play in the playoffs has been subpar mm-hmm. to mediocre at best. He has not looked yeah. very good. He he just he looks very indecisive. He doesn't have a whole lot of weapons. And I'd have to say one of my favorite tweets was uh, sent out that said uh, Percy Harvin was just hitting the head with a skittle. He'll be out for the Super Bowl. But um, <laughs> right, right, and, and exactly. That's, that's going to be the key. The key is going to be if they get Percy Harvin back and if he can play the whole game because he he adds a different dimension to that to that offense. And right now, Denver's right. defense is absolutely stuffing the run, and you're going to have to challenge right. him through the air. But who's he going to throw the ball to? Golden Tate, right? And and yeah. and who it's, else? I mean, it, it, that that and that's the thing, dude. This is it's it's when you look at the game right now. You know, right now the Broncos are a two point favorite, and it will change. And 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 I'm going to tell you the reason why it'll change, and it, it's going to be based all on the weather forecast. I mean, it, it's if if it's shitty weather. Then you can, you will obviously. I think you could see enough where Seattle will become the favorite all of a sudden. It's because now you're taking Peyton Manning's throwing game out of the game. If it's bad weather, any bad weather, and they have the game, then it all of a sudden we all know that the advantage goes to the defensive team, which is definitely Seattle, you know. And uh, and we know Seattle has the ability to run. Marshawn Lynch is going to run crazy in fucking bad weather, and Denver really just doesn't have that on their side of the ball. It's going to be hard, it's going to be. It would probably be, you know, offensive possessions by Seattle where they had the ball for a long time. Now, going back to what you said, George, with it, there, there is no Seattle is not, you know, and I was listening to Brian Dawkins actually talking about this earlier, and he had very valid points. There is no wow receiver on Seattle. The, the biggest thing that posed threat that they could have is actually if Percy Harvin came in and did the slide, because then you got to match him up with Champ Bailey, who's been out for the whole season, and that becomes a difficult matchup. But Golden Tate and Baldwin are good receivers. Golden Tate is a great receiver after he catches the ball. Baldwin is a good receiver, but he's not the type of receiver that you're going to say, okay, I'm going to change my whole defensive you know plan game plan for this receiver right. you know what i mean he's not like a calvin johnson he's not like an andre johnson he's not like any of those guys or you know like or you're or going to say Freddie okay johnson. i'm going to have to come <laughs> exactly or even my johnson exactly so i mean it's like you know so he's not where you're going to shift you know your safety over to help, you know, because you know you're going to need it. They're not going to have to make those adjustments for that receiving core. And so, well, the other thing uh, to I, me, I, I wonder about is the offensive play calling on Seattle. Like, I really, I'm really yeah. starting to question who's calling the plays and why they're calling the plays they are because they're down in the goal line. Everyone expects them to run. They line up and they run. And then they run again. Right. And then they run again. And on fourth down, they run in the fumble and the whole nine. And I'm thinking to myself, bootleg. Bootleg, boot. Well, you have a mobile quarterback. Yeah. Le- do a full, yeah. do a, a flood. Have your tight end and maybe your fullback both leak out to the same side that the quarterback's bootlegging to, or even do a naked bootleg and have Russell Wilson boot to the side wherever. I mean, I just I, I'm looking at the play calling and I I don't have enough confidence in off in Seattle's offense to give them the nod in this game. I really don't. Their defense is stout. Right. It's going to be there, but I think Peyton Manning, mm-hmm. if if the weather holds up, is going to cause them more problems than they're going to cause Peyton. Yeah, and 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 that's you know if I think if it's a good you know I mean I think the uh, the coldest Super Bowl ever was in Tulane. Super Bowl six was played in New Orleans. I think in Tulane, Super Bowl right? six was or it? seven. Yeah, it was like in, it was in Tulane. It was what thirty nine degrees yeah, or something. Yeah, don't worry, they said. it's going to scroll across the bottom of ESPN all week long <laughs> because it is cold as shit right here. I know it's cold in uh, Philly. It's cold in DC. Yeah, and it, you know they're talking about the high thirties. That's not going to affect Peyton Manning. Slippery with rain, ice that will affect them. You know yeah. what I mean? But if it's cold, just cold. If it's just cold, Peyton Manning's used to playing in the cold. Yeah, you know, even though his last game it was warm as shit. If but. it's if it's cold and dry, Seattle's going to have their hands. I think Seattle's going to have their hands full regardless. And and again, it's going to be it's going to be what Seattle's offense can do. And and I just right. they're going to have to score points because as good as Seattle's defense is, they're not going to keep Peyton Manning off the board. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be tough. You and, know, and here's what do you the, got? Here's who, the who other thing: have? who do you have? I'm going to be interested what? to see if, if Carroll's going to be able to make the halftime adjustments. I, I haven't watched Seattle that much. I don't know enough about them, to be honest. But I don't know how well mm-hmm. they make adjustments. And that's the one thing, you know, I've always tipped my hat to Belichick for. Belichick's always yeah. been able to make adjustments on the fly. And, I mean, granted, it didn't work this past week because it just they don't and, have the weapons. 
And this is another thing, man. As much as great as Seattle's defense is, I, everybody I think will agree with me that their secondary is the stronger part of the the strongest part of their defense. Mm-hmm. You know, now obviously you have to have you know, and Richard Sherman made this come. You got to have a good front seven to put pressure on the quarterback. But I think there's. Peyton Manning has faced some pretty decent front sevens. If they allow Peyton Manning to have time in that pocket, it doesn't matter how good of a cover corner you are. Those guys, that receiving core, you know, they're going to get open. Demarius Thomas, Decker, you know, Wes Welker, they're going to get open. You know, yeah. and uh, Wes and, Welker and his little and lollipop a, helmet. Exactly. That thing looks huge, <laughs> exactly. dude. That shit was fucking crazy, wasn't it, man? Hey, but I tell you but, what, uh, you if, like, you if like I was a zoo. player and that meant the difference between get a concussion and not getting a concussion, sign me up. I'd had I'd had that shit on too, oh, Dude, yeah, because yeah, you don't want to be fucking you know drinking your soup out of fucking straw and shit. L- looking 10 like years Magneto. Later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, fucking bending steel and shit. But uh, who do you have? What's what do you have? What's your final score? Um, Denver's gonna win twenty-seven twenty-four. 27-24. Mm-hmm. I got it 30 I got it Denver 35-21. Okay. You know, we'll see what happens. I just I look, um, I just hope the Denver part's right. I don't really give a shit about the score cuz I I would love to see Denver for Peyton Manning just to win this and sit there and go, mm-hmm. "You know what? It's been fun. I'm done and retire right there on the spot." Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's I mean, this season if 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 the Broncos can pull this off, it's going to be crazy because you're going to look at Peyton Manning Definitely getting his fifth MVP, um, beating Tom Brady along the way, which I'm sure was very, you know, satisfying. Is great for him. Makes them both in the postseason against each other, be two and two against each other, uh, all breaking their passing record and breaking the touchdown passing record. I mean, he, uh, total yards record and the touchdown passing record. He, so it's, he broke it's everything. Crazy. He broke everything. You know, it's up now. Moving on to other sports. Um, <sighs> It's not baseball season yet, but you know I have to talk to you, George, about your New York Yankees. For all you people out there that don't know, George is a big New York Yankees fan. And I'm going to tell you what. Your boys already have spent $491 million. That's <laughs> almost a half a billion, short. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, they're giving Japanese pitchers who have never played in the major leagues, right, the fifth highest contract Ever buy a pitcher? But hey, but they, do me a favor. Only, have you heard of the, you know that dude Dice K who's pitching for Texas? Yes. Yeah. Do you see what he just did? I'm no. I'm sorry. No. That's you. No, not Dice K. You Darvish. You Darvish down in Texas. Dice K is that piece of garbage who plays for that god awful team in Boston. Yeah. Um, right. But no, Dice. Uh, you Darvish is nasty down in Texas, and supposedly this. Uh, yeah. Oh man, that was so hard not to say something racial right there. This uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> this guy's supposed to be better than you, Darvish. So, we'll see. Right. I, and it's just the thing. I mean, you know what? Maybe he will be. I, I, I don't know. I just think you know what? You're playing in a different league, different organizations, obviously. And when you look at the other t- pitchers that have received that kind of money, they all, they all, every one of all the other four that were paid higher, they all won Cy Youngs. Well, you know, you've you haven't thrown a ball in here, but it's not just that; it's all the other things that they're doing. I mean, they just gave this guy 155 million. They signed him to a contract for 155 million. Yeah, but they, and they're then they going signed, fucking all. Ju- out. They to me the the worst. Like I, I understand that one looks a little absurd for a guy who's never played, but to me, Jacoby Ellsbury is the one the contract that just doesn't make any sense to me because they're they're giving this dude yeah. 153 million, and I just. I uh, I don't understand that, but I mean to me the and Carlos Beltran I'm like yeah, but the the biggest pickup is Brian McCann, which is the catcher from the yeah. uh, the Braves, and because that position's been hurting right. for the Yankees since Posada's been gone, but um yeah. I think and he's I, the biggest I upgrade. Think that- and I think another thing, the Yankees are, are in a position where they're saying, you know what, we're not going to have a rod, so that is going to alleviate. I mean, obviously, well, that's they don't have twenty-five to pay them. million dollars off the books this year. 25 million. So that's, I mean, so they're saying, okay, you know what? I mean, obviously, they're not going to pay anybody a lump sum. You know, they're going to, you know, a certain amount of it's going to be guaranteed. So they're thinking, okay, you know what? We can fucking make a move. And this season didn't look too good for us. And we want to try to make, I guess they want to make a run, which obviously, if there's any organization in sports that gets that shit done, it is the New York Yankees. Oh, yeah, they're, they not, want almost they're not one afraid out of to spend money. So it'll be uh, yes, yeah. You Darvish, it'll, the the guy I was talking about earlier, you Darvish, when the Rangers picked him up, he got a six year, sixty million dollar deal, but they also had to pay fifty one point seven million dollar posting, where the Rangers only had to pay right. twenty. 
Holy wow. cow, dude. That's insane. They no. paid $51 million just to be able to sign that guy. Now, speaking of moving on to the NBA, speaking of valuable franchises and money spent, what do you, who do you think was the most valuable NBA franchise this year? The most valuable NBA franchise this past season? This past season. The Heat. Yep. The most, huh? The Heat. Nope. Mm. I don't even think, I don't, I don't even, who is the most valuable NBA team? The Thunder? Nope. The Lakers? Nope. Oh, I got shit going on. Hold on one second. No, the Lakers actually came in at number two, and they said they would have come at number one, but they had to. They spent so much money on luxury tax and shit like that. Okay. The so New York Knicks. Ew. Top Forbes list. The New York Knicks followed by the Los Angeles Lakers, then followed by the Chicago Bills and the, uh, the Chicago, Chicago Bills. Bills. Chicago. <laughs> Holy trees! The Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> the Chicago Bulls, not to be mess, not to be mistaken for the Buffalo Bulls, but anyway, uh, the Chicago Bulls and the Boston Celtics. Your Miami Heat didn't even. I don't even know if they're on this. There, the Celtics and then the Nets. The net, no, the yeah, the Nets. Ew. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the other crazy. thing that's nuts right now, and and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I don't think this is gonna be a shock to anyone, but I think this is LeBron's last season in Miami. Um. Anyone paying attention on Dwayne Wade's birthday, he put out a picture collage saying we'll always be brothers through thick and thin, yada, yada, yada. And to me, that was a sign yeah. that LeBron's like, all right, the writing's on the wall. This team's about maxed out. We've done all we can do here. There's not a whole lot left. Um, Dwayne yeah. Wade is just beat up. He's missed 12 games this season. I mean, he's. Yeah. I, I think he's about done. I think his body's done. Yeah, I think he is too, man. I think. I think this... Will probably be. I mean, I, I, you know, and I look at what they have to go through in the East. You know, just in the Indiana Pacers, the rest of the teams are weak, but the fucking West is so crazy too. And I'm gonna tell you what, man. Paul George is quickly becoming like an NBA superstar. That, that breakaway he had the other day when he did that 360 in a game, like the slam that he did in a game, arguably could have won a slam dunk contest. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it definitely would have been entertaining to see. And then my favorite thing is, is right after the game, he gets an invite to the dunk contest and he goes, nah. Yeah, I'm like, fuck that shit, you know? No, because I mean, if, yeah. if he's smart, the other thing I would do is I would, I would, me, I told you, with as many minutes as they're playing, uh, I would be mm -hmm. sick during the all NBA right. All-Star just just the rest because they're yeah. they're legitimately could send their front their starting five to the All-Star team. I don't think too many people would argue that, but with the minutes right. that they're putting up, I mean, I'm looking to take a break because right now they yeah. want home field. They have the best home field, they have the best record in the East. I don't know how the record compares to the it might be the best record in the NBA, but that would be home court. What I said. Because when they motherfuckers start playing, you said home field. Because when they start playing on a 100-yard football field, that's going to be a real basketball game, son. Home field, home court, <laughs> home whatever. Put it this home way. They, they want home field advantage. And if they get home field advantage, they're going to beat the Heat. And I am said that right here, right here now in front of you. If the Miami Heat yeah. have to come in at the number two seed and they have to play at Indiana at game seven, mm -hmm. they're going to lose. They they just do not. Yeah. I don't think they have it this year. But that's just me saying yeah. that. Um, They just traded away Joel Anthony for some dude. I was like, really? That's him? Okay. All right. And this is the thing, man. I mean, Indiana beat you with they slow down the game and they got those big men and stuff like this. And I tell you what, the Heat, to me, could have trouble with young-ass teams. I, and I, I said this last year and everybody kind of laughed at me. And I'm like, you know, I thought that I, I said I think the Wizards will be good this year, decent. They'll make the playoffs, which I think they will make the playoffs. They're playing pretty good. I don't think they're like the fifth seed. You can have a losing record in the East and be in the fifth seed. But the one thing it is, is, is these matchups makes these games. And the Wizards, man, are a type of team that, you know, they they run. You know, and they're up and down the court. And an older team, that can fuck you up. Well, they can get caught up in that and get surprised. And the weird thing <clears> is, is, is I don't know how this will fit in, but the Wizards have gone on record to say they're, they're trying to go after Greg Monroe from the, the Pistons. I don't, I don't know who? how that f Greg Monroe from the Pistons. Right. I, I just don't hmm. know. I know he's a local kid. Didn't he go to Georgetown? He, he I think he did play with, uh, which magic with, uh, Otto Porter. Right. So I'm just trying to Otto figure Porter. out how he's going to fit into that. I don't know, man. I mean, you know, I, I I think at one time they at one point they might get rid of Bradley Bill. I mean, Bradley Bill's a great player, but he shoots, you know, he shoots the ball a lot, you know. But any and, and he's, you know, he's what he's shooting what what 32, 30, 31, 32 percent for as much as you shoot. That's not a high. I mean, good great shooters, you know, we shoot they shoot we they shoot in the forties, you know, and so 
at some point in time, you're going to think, okay, you know, maybe another team needs this. He could be a valuable asset to get to get bring some players in that could help fill some of the player, you know, areas that we have weaknesses in. And I, I think the Wizards, you know, if they can get to keep their confidence up, they could maybe be one of these teams to get into the playoffs and all of a sudden get past the first round and knock somebody, somebody out if they're not one of the top four seeds by the end of the season. So I mean, well, right now I, the Wizards are my, uh, the Wizards are twenty and twenty. So they're five hundred. Yeah. <clears throat> and what are they at the five seat? Um. Well, this doesn't have the uh, whole thing laid out. I'm just looking. So that would be Pacers are leading thirty three and seven. Heat would be thirty and twelve. You got the Hawks at twenty one and nineteen, and then the Bulls, Raptors, and Wizards are all sitting at twenty and twenty. So there's be a four right. like a three way tie for the fourth seed. Right. So it's that. So that's you know it's it's. It's. I'm telling you, it's a possibility. They might, you know, say say for example, you get them in the the four seed or whatever. Maybe they end up in a four seed. Maybe they work their way up and end up being a three seed because in basketball, even though your team wins the division, like the Raptors are winning their division, the the team that's out that doesn't win their that doesn't isn't winning their division that has the highest uh the best record. If their record is better than that other division winner, they go up. For example, for example, at one time, even though Toronto was winning their division, the record was so terrible, uh, the Hawks were above them because they had a better record. Yeah, well, and they, were, they had the best record. According to this, because they actually have the playoffs as if it were today, the Wizards would be a five seed. So they would end right. up be playing the, was it four versus five? Yeah, they probably play the Raptors. Yeah, they right? would open up against the Raptors, and then the uh, the Pacers yeah. would play the Bobcats. The Heat would play the Nets, which it's not wouldn't be a fun it's matchup because the Nets play the Heat it tough. Would, and then the yeah. Bulls it, versus the Hawks and the Raptors versus the Wizards in the East. Let me tell you something. The, 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 the problem is, the biggest thing is, is that the Heat, everybody's going to be coming after you. you know. And let me tell you something. You do not want to play the Nets. And your Name first it. matchup? No, they that don't. That would be terrible. Because you got fucking two people that know you guys and have always given you guys fits. Garnett and Paul Pierce. Mm -hmm. And now you got all these other people. So that could that that could be an upset. You know, I mean Well so why don't we waddle anyway. on out to the West and take a look at the top teams over there? You got the Spurs, the old mm -hmm. grizzled veteran. Been there, done that. We're back here doing it again, sitting at 32-9, and nine, leading the West. The right. Thunder and Kevin Durant is on fire. Seven seven games or eight straight games of 30-plus? Uh, something crazy like that. I mean, a couple, few games over 40. I mean, you look at Durant, and, you know, they were talking about them earlier. I was listening to SVP and Rosillo, and they were talking about him. And, and they made, they were making comparisons to of Kevin Durant to Larry Bird and Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson, obviously some of the greatest. And they were saying the thing about Durant is he can do it all. He's he's got a few inches. Like you look at him compared to Jordan. He's got Jordan by three three inches, maybe four inches. And so, so he had the height that Jordan didn't have. You know what I mean? And he can go. He can drive. He can he he can do all that stuff. Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson has around the same, close to the same height, but Magic Johnson doesn't have the outside shot that Durant has. Right. You know. And then you had Bird who was close to the height, same height, maybe a couple inches shorter, had the outside shot that Durant has, but he didn't have the ability to go to the hoop like Durant has. And it's like, this guy can do it all. I mean, he really can. He right. can take it. To, he can. He can come down the lane and fucking slam on your ass. He can. He can do it all. He can shoot a ten footer, slam it, fucking shoot beyond the arc. He can do it all. And you know the way he's just improving now. It's like, man, he. Can and probably will be one of the greatest of all time. So on this eight-game mm -hmm. stretch of scoring more than thirty in eight consecutive mm -hmm. games, he's also managed to score over forty one, two, three times, and over fifty once. Yep, he's he's yeah. absolutely been on fire. But my, I guess my only question is, can the man play defense? Um, no, I mean he can. I guess if he wants to focus on that, and for for the Thunder to win championships, he's going to have to do that. He's uh, you know, I mean you look at all the greats like Jordan. Um, I don't know. I can't remember how good Johnson was on defense. He was decent. Well, you you got to figure Magic. I mean, I Magic had a distinct size advantage over the guys he was going against. Magic was what six six. Yeah. Playing yeah. playing point and shooting guard. I mean. Yeah, and center at one time. I mean he, you know, he's he. It, yeah, he's. I mean, I guess, but I don't know. I, I when I think of defensive players that had that, I always think of Jordan. 
you know, Jordan was just a great defensive player, and obviously Pippen was a great defensive player. Mm -hmm. um, I think Durant is more your scorer. I mean, he's more like a a Malone, you know what I mean? That kind of for like, you know, he scores one of the scoring four. It's more like a like a, a finesse player. Like you don't see Dirk Nowitzki. You never saw him, uh, you know, really playing a lot of crazy defense. And I think that's more what you see with Durant now. Dirk is he going to have to change his game? Nuts. How the hell are you seven foot tall and you don't average a double double? I, well, I'm telling you, that's because he doesn't. He's not. He doesn't have a lot of physical play. He like, gets he doesn't, scared if he get, if he, he gets anywhere near the elbow. He gets nervous and immediately starts backing yeah. up. I mean, I look at Dirk as a seven footer that could just has a sweet touch. He's got that. He's near the arc, either right inside or right outside. I mean, he's you know that's his range. He doesn't like getting fucking in under the basket. No, and, doing and, and he that's can do it. and that's got his team right now coming in at the seventh seed. They're they're barely they're barely <clears throat> in front of the Suns, and both those teams are barely in front of. I mean, you got three teams right on the cusp of that eight seed with the Grizzlies, uh, Nuggets, and Timberwolves, but then. Mm -hmm. You also have to, like, the number three seed is the Trailblazers. Then you got the Clippers, the Rockets, right. the Warriors. I mean, all those teams are so young and hungry. And I'm going to tell you it's what, crazy. nothing, I would enjoy nothing more than the Rockets get swept. Yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't stand I Dwight Howard. I really don't like that dude. Yeah. What are they sitting at? What seed are they at? I think they're fourth. They're fourth, yeah. I just don't, I, I really don't think. They have a team yet. Maybe if they get another piece in there. Remember, I said that at the beginning of the season. I don't think they have all. They need that other piece. They need that that third man. You know, you got Howard, you got Harden. You need another dominant player, like a good four, to come in there. And I think that's when they'll be a team to watch out for. But I, I think they'll lose. I think they'll lose maybe in the first round, dude. I, I, like you know? I said, I hope so. So you go, anyway, you going to the Olympics? Am I going to the Olympics? Yeah, the Winter Olympics. Yeah. Shit. No? Fuck that shit. You, I'm going to the summer ones in Brazil. The summer? You're going to what in Brazil? The Summer Olympics 2016 in Brazil. Oh, nice. You but I'm fun. not... Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing that. But I'm not... Fuck, fuck, fuck going to Russia and fucking a car bomb blowing my fucking right earlobe off. I mean, these... My, you see those those girls they're talking about? They're no joke. No, they're not playing around, dude. They're, they're, they're yeah, like... Yeah, I mean, they're... They're going to blow some shit up. And I'm going to tell you right now, as an Olympic athlete, that's something you train your whole entire life for. I might strongly be reconsidering that. Yeah, I just, it's just crazy, it's man. Just, it's, it's weird. Be a like, I don't understand how somebody thinks that's normal. Like, hey, cool, you guys are coming to my country. I'm going to blow you up. Yeah, it's just, just they just want to start shit. So I'm like, you know what, man, that shit's just crazy. I hope that they have security out the ass and I, and, and they make, nothing bad happens over there. Well, this, but, is, I mean, also the, this because, is also the same. Putin is sitting there telling people, as long as the gays stay away from the kids, we'll be all right. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't think crazy. gays were pedophiles. Like, those are two totally different things. Yeah, and, you know, and that's the thing, man. Like, I, I, I think, you know, the one thing where... I feel like, I mean, I don't know how the IOC handles it when countries and cities bid to have to host the Olympics. To me, you know, if your country or your leader at the time has a problem with any anybody's color, anybody's, you know, choice of, uh, you know, sexual preferences, religion, anything like that, you know, if you just can't be completely diplomatic across the board to all types of people of the world, then I, I think you got to you got to say, OK, as the committee say, do we want to have the fucking Olympics here? No, it's a little you know late. I mean? Yeah, but it's a little late at this point. Yeah, it's a little late for that shit because it's happening, and you know everybody. Just I mean, look at it this sure way. I mean, fucking... the crane, the, uh, one of the cranes collapsed in Brazil while they're building your soccer stadium, so you can go watch your summer yeah. Olympics because the guy worked for thirty six hours straight. Yeah, I'm telling you, dude, it's it's crazy. I was to what it does for a city and the whole economics of the city is, is crazy. You can't imagine it because, you know, I, I would go out to Salt Lake City and then drive up through Park Park City um, back when my son was really young. He lived there when he's four. So I would go out there before he came here with me. And uh, I remember that, the you know, Salt Lake City won the bid for the, uh, the, the, the Winter Games in 2002. And this was in, I was going out there in 96, six years before the Olympics. Mm -hmm. they, but they were already changing the entire infrastructure of that town. They were building new roads and everything just to prepare because there's like, okay, we're going to be the stage, you know, the stage for the world. And everybody from the, around the world is going to be coming here to see the Winter Olympics. They had to build roads so people could get to Park City where the, you got up in the mountains and they were having the ski, you know, the ski events and stuff. It just brought so much money and attention to that city. And so when a, a city 
wins that, they're like, holy shit, this will make us a city. Yeah, this will the, make us the a, one, a much- The one thing that a lot of people don't know is once the Olympics are gone, those buildings and everything that gets built usually just fall to pieces because the the host city has no more use for them. Where Salt Lake City, no. they've turned them, they actually turn that into the Olympic training ground for our winter athletes. But like right. when yeah, the games when the games were in China, dude, if you go if yeah. you go and look at uh, pictures of those uh, buildings and whatnot now, they're just overgrown with weeds and everything else. They they were never used again. Yeah, and I had a friend that was just in Italy, and you know were traveling and they were like you know you could see some of that stuff from the olympics from rimini i, I, I believe it was rimini uh, when they had the games there that's just sitting there not being used yeah you know so it's it's funny it's but it's anyway weird. guys we're gonna yeah it is weird because it's like a fucking abandoned amusement park and shit you know but uh in that, anyway, that what, guys, uh michael jackson's place was like kind of Kind of. Never, never land. Whatever the hell. I don't mm-hmm. know. Who the fuck knows? That Peter Pan shit. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Thoughts and comments below. We are out of here. I'm fucking taking off vacation, so I ain't <laughs> going to see you fucking, you, you people for a while. But uh, uh, we will be in touch. We will be in touch. <laughs> We will be in touch. Come, that come, sounds scary. We will be in touch come mo- come 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 Monday, February third. Yikes. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys. Later. <laughs>